next week. Um, I think uh, Senator Padilla was holding on for a while. He's had to go preside uh, on the Senate, and uh, hopefully he'll be able to join us before we conclude here. But we've been joined by Mark Kelly from Arizona. Mark, great to see you. Thanks thank, for joining us today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dr. Waterhouse, um, good morning, and and thank you um, for all of you for being here today. Uh, but Dr. Waterhouse, almost exactly one year ago, uh, the EPA announced the creation of the Office of Mountains, Deserts, and Plains, a new regional office focused on effectively cleaning up abandoned mine lands across the West and accelerating the cleanup of Superfund sites uh, in the West. Uh, as you may know, I believe EPA must be doing more to clean up the more than 500 abandoned uranium mines on the Navajo Nation. Like tribal leaders, uh, I'm concerned that these sites fail to compete well. They don't compete well for annual Superfund appropriations funding, and that red tape and delays have caused significant delays in cleaning up these contaminated sites. It's a big problem. I mean, over 500 abandoned uran uranium mines. So, Dr. Waterhouse, what can you share about the work that the new Office of Mountains, Deserts, and Plains has done over the past year? And, if confirmed, what role do you hope the office will continue to play in prioritizing Western Superfund cleanup sites in the coming years? Good morning, and thank you so much for your question, Senator. You know, the problem of abandoned uranium mines, as you said, is a, is a very big one, and it's a very important one. Communities there should have the right to be in a clean environment and not faced with that pollution. In fact, I had a visit to the Navajo Nation scheduled for last week, um, but unfortunately it had to be postponed due to increasing COVID cases uh, on the reservation. Mm -hmm. But we're really excited about the office, uh, Senator, because that office is able to bring resources to bear to provide assistance to those communities. It brings technological and innovation resources to, bring, to figure out how do we manage the massive volume of waste that we have there. And so they're looking for innovative, innovative solutions for cleanup. It also is helping us coordinate with our tribal partners, with our federal family members, with local resources, and across the regions. You know, it's so big. We, we're talking about multiple states and driving for hours and hours to be able to see it all. And so we've got Region 6 and Region 9. And this office helps to coordinate along with the tribe and others to help us find solutions. They also are developing a prioritization package to deal with the Tronox settlement so that we have a way of using those monies that is going to maximize their effectiveness in getting cleanup done. And you feel they, they, they're off to a reasonable start over the past year? I do, Senator. I think they've done a great job in a short period of time with limited resources. Um, you know, since I came into the agency, it was a brand new office at that, mm -hmm. at that time. But they really have an amazing staff who've done a really great job in helping us move those projects forward. Yeah, and um, uh, do you think they need any new authorities or any additional funding um, to make sure that they have the tools necessary to do this rather complex task of uh, cleaning up these uh, super fun sites in the West? Senator, I certainly wouldn't turn down any additional monies to... <laughs> toward additional staffing and resources for the office that would help them with building capacity to be even more effective than they have been so far. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, and a similar, sort of similar top, topic I wanted to discuss with, with you is PFAS cleanup. It's a big issue in Arizona, um, and around, in and around Tucson and Phoenix and, and other, uh, really across the state. So um, I wanted to ask you for an update on the administration's work to remediate PFAS contamination. As you know, after a number of delays in January, EPA began a pro the process of regulating uh, PFOA and PFOS under the Superfund program. And this is incredibly important to us because several of our uh, aquifers, uh, which are sources of drinking water, have growing plumes of PFAS contamination. Uh, yet, because EPA has not established cleanup standards yet for these PFAS chemicals, it has fallen on the state and local governments to fund 
efforts to clean up PFAS contamination. That's why I fought to ensure that the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act included $10 billion, $10 billion to fund PFAS cleanup efforts. Uh, but while significant, this funding will not go far enough in the long term to clean up uh, this problem. So what updates can you share with us today about the administration's commitment to remediate PFAS contaminants through the uh, Superfund process? Thank you so much for that question, Senator. You know, PFAS is such an important issue. These chemicals have such a, a long lifespan and, and such dangerous toxicological impacts. We within the Office of Land and Emergency Management have moved forward with the internal agency process to work toward a rulemaking that would designate uh, certain PFAS chemicals as hazardous substances. That process is one that requires rigorous review by the internal offices to ensure that we're following the science and following the law. And I can tell you, Senator, that we're moving that through that process as quickly as we can so we can have a proposed rule to give us additional authorities to address PFAS in cleanups.